The following instructional video demonstrates our technique for primary arthrodesis of a Liz Frank fracture dislocation using bone autograft and nitinol staple fixation. Our author's disclosures are detailed here, some of which are directly related to nitinol staples. This work was supported by a resident small project research grant from the AOFAS. The patient is a 50-year-old female that sustained a ground-level fall. She had immediate pain and inability to bear weight and was found to have dorsal midfoot swelling and ecchymosis tracking into the plantar arch. Weight-bearing radiographs demonstrated widening of the Lisfranc interval. The weight-bearing CT scan showed avulsion fractures of the first and second metatarsal bases and a true third metatarsal base fracture adjacent to the TMT joint on the sagittal view, as well as widening of the Lisfranc interval and mild lateral subluxation of the second and third metatarsals on the coronal views. She was taken to the operating room two weeks later for primary arthrodesis of the first through third TMT joints. Her skin swelling had improved and was suitable for surgical incisions. She was positioned supine on a radiolucent table with a hip bump and a calf S mark tourniquet. Thoroscopy was then used to stress the midfoot and demonstrated instability of the first through third TMT joints. We begin by harvesting calcaneal autograft. An oblique incision is made over the lateral calcaneal tuberosity in the sural nerve safe zone. Dissection beyond the dermis is blunt in order to reduce the risk of nerve injury. An 8 mm bone graft harvester is utilized, making multiple passes to collect an ample amount of graft for later use. Incisions were then planned using fluoroscopy, one over the dorsal medial first TMT joint and one over the interval between the second and third TMT joints while allowing for a generous skin bridge. Standard approach to the TMT joint was then performed and retractors are placed. Joint preparation is then performed. The author performing this case prefers flat cuts with a microsagittal saw. Several of our authors prefer to utilize sharp osteotomes and curettes for joint preparation. Joint preparation is then performed in the second and third TMT joints in similar fashion. All cartilage and debris is then removed from each joint using curettes and ronchures. Copious irrigation and relux are used to confirm complete arthrodesis preparation. The subchondral bone of each metatarsal and cuneiform is then drilled to prepare for fusion. Bone graft is then carefully packed into each joint to be fused prior to proceeding with reduction and fixation. We begin with reduction of the medial column. The first TMT is held reduced and provisionally fixed with a 2 OK wire. The author performing this case prefers hybrid fixation of the first TMT and the plate is provisionally fixed with olive wires. Other authors prefer to fix the first TMT with two orthogonal nitinol staples. Fluoro is then obtained showing satisfactory reduction of the first TMT joint. Using the guide, we then drill one of the holes for the staple and place a peg. The second hole is then drilled, the peg is then removed, and the staple is inserted using manual pressure. The inserter is then removed, and the secondary impactor is used to fully seat the staple. The plate is then fixed with remaining screws, leaving one hole open for a first to second metatarsal screw. A large point of reduction clamp is then applied to reduce the second TMT and Liz Frank joint, which is confirmed on fluoroscopy. Again, utilizing a guide, we drill and place the first peg in the metatarsal base. In this case, the joint was further manually compressed before drilling for the second leg of the staple in the middle cuneiform. With pegs in place, fluoro can be used to confirm positioning prior to inserting the staple. The staple is again manually inserted and impacted into place. The point of reduction clamp is then applied to the third metatarsal base in the medial cuneiform to reduce the third TMT joint. A third staple is then applied in a similar fashion across the third TMT joint by drilling and placing pegs. The staple is then placed with manual pressure and then impacted into place. A screw is then applied across the first and second metatarsal bases using fluoroscopy. Final fluoroscopy shows satisfactory reduction and implant positioning. The wounds are then irrigated and closed in a layered fashion. Soft dressings and a short leg splint are applied. Postoperatively, she will be non weight bearing for eight weeks total. She will follow up in two weeks for transition to a cast. Aspirin will be used for DVT prophylaxis. Thank you.